Greetings, I'm Steve Gustafson, the Zipline Guy. Normally, I'm out operating, building, or talking about ziplines. But this year isn't normal, as the world has been gripped by the coronavirus. While I was fortunate to operate an outdoor business with social distancing practices, others weren't as lucky. This became very apparent during my most recent visit to Las Vegas to see my good friend, John Payne, former lead vocalist for the supergroup Asia. Normally, I'll commission John and his band to visit the studio and create music for our TV show. The casinos, camaraderie, great music and entertainment, and good food always makes for a great visit. But this visit was far from normal. Wearing masks, disinfecting surfaces, maintaining our distance, and the smell of hand sanitizer lingering in the air. With the microphones falling silent, no one knows the future of the industry. What's happening in Vegas isn't just in Vegas. Entertainment from New York to Nashville to Los Angeles and everywhere in between have all been shuttered. So these are my friends. Now I'm aware. And this is their story. I think one of the things, if you can say, makes me successful because I think any true striving musician never believes they're successful, which is what takes you on to the next bit. And that's part of, I think, one of my skills is that I don't give up. I'm tenacious. If I'm put down, I don't give up, whether it be engineering, because I do many things in, in the in the bands I've been in, as well as a script writer for a show. I'm an engineer, I'm a record producer, I'm a singer, I'm a bass player, I'm a keyboard player, I'm a guitarist, play a few other stringed instruments. But all of those, I just strive to be the best that I can. And I think that's what drives me on. I usually also um, a fairly you know, entrepreneurial, come up with new ideas, you know, like one, one this year, which was actually doing a solo gig on my own during, during COVID to actually get around some of the rules. But I, I think one of my main things is to actually never give up, never give up and keep going forward. I mean, the fact of the matter is I am nowhere near the most talented person. There are so many more uh, skilled musicians, but a lot of times people forget that you need to bring to a job or a gig the same things that you would bring to any other job, whether you're going to an office, whether you're going to a construction job site, whether you're going to, um, whether you're a, a truck driver, whether you're, no matter what you're doing, you need to show up on time. You need to be prepared. You need to work well with other people, right? Um, have a good attitude. Don't don't show up to work um, being a grump, right? Or complaining about everything. I think the most uh, important thing to do when you get offered a gig, show up majorly prepared. Know all the songs, chart them out, know the tempos. Um, and I think that's helped me in my career, just showing up and being ready to go, you know, majorly rehearsed, majorly prepared. And um, of course, all your gear has to be in top working condition too, but. And you know, other things I've found a little uh, challenging at times is like a lot of these artists want you to learn their show, but they want you to learn it 
how their last drummer did it, who may not be the original drummer from the original recordings. So that's a whole other thing you gotta have down. And I'm always early. I'm like early, uncomfortably early at times. To what I feel is my success is, it's this simple, failure is not an option. You know, when I come into a project, I need to know all the information. It's practice, 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 again, 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 till it's perfect. That's how I want to go into any situation. It's beyond just knowing my part. I want to know all the parts, all the components that make up that song or the project. My last gig was a Thursday night gig at Red Rock Casino. That was our, um, it's a band called the Wind Jammers and we do a Yacht Rock tribute. So we play all that great music from the late seventies, Christopher Cross and Michael McDonald and Kenny Loggins and Toto. It's a, uh, such a great band. We have such a blast doing that. And uh, I think that was the last gig. And then we heard a couple days later that every casino in town and every non-essential business was being closed. So when COVID first hit and things first started shutting down, I would have to say I was probably more on the side of optimism. I was thinking, I wasn't thinking just a couple weeks. I was thinking maybe six months. That's what I was thinking. And I, I've fortunately, I've always been a guy who lives beneath my means and I'm a good saver, thank God. And I prepare for things, because in this business, you never know if your voice is gonna go or you break your wrist or something. So I've always been a good saver. And I figured, yeah, maybe six months. And then it started going to the next stage. And a lot of my friends in New York my agency is out of New York. They were saying this could go on for a year and a half. And I just, I didn't believe it. I don't know if I just didn't want to believe it, but I didn't see that happening. And then I, then I started seeing, you know, Broadway show, shutting down. And then they're saying, well, they're going to shut down for another year. I'm like, you're making that call now. And then it really started becoming real. Like what's going on. And I started seeing so many of my friends here in Las Vegas and also in Orlando working at Disney and Universal. And I started seeing that the bloodbath it's becoming and it's, you know, I'm, I'm worried. Of course I'm worried. And it's just, that's human nature, but you know, we're gonna get through this because we have to. Well, when, when the COVID shutdown first happened here in Las Vegas, uh, it, it, was, it was definitely a shock. And I was worried for more for my friends than for myself. Um, I think the, the initial feeling, at least for me, was that this is going to last for a few months. And then it became clear that, no, this is more than just a few months of the shutdown. That this is something that's going to be life changing for all of us and more for some than others. Uh, so it, it became apparent that depression that sense of loss, that, that absence of our outlet uh, it, it was, it was going to be profound. And I still don't know when there's going to be an end to it. My initial thought was it would be about a three month uh, period of downtime. Because at that time, it's like one gig, you know, I'd get a phone call. Okay, this has been canceled. That's been canceled. Then I get a call from Lee saying, okay, these Asia featuring John Payne shows are canceled. Then Brody, the leader for Yellow Brick Road would call and say, well, okay, this is now canceled, but we still have this gig. Then a week later, okay, that gig's been canceled. And just one by one, it all dropped off. So after three months, it's like, okay, this could last. We could be out of work for half a year. And I, I grew concerned. Uh, uh, there was times where I wondered if there ever will be a live entertainment industry. I had a lot of shows on the books. A lot of shows with 
the rock pack. She clips with her story of rock. And one by one, they were canceling. And I kept thinking, okay, that's all right. That one's canceled. We'll just, we'll get the next, the next one will happen. We'd advertise, everybody's coming. Canceled or postponed. I was calling it postponed at the time. Now I realize it's, they were canceled shows. Um, and I thought that it would be over quickly. A couple months, maybe a couple of months. Uh, when I when it first came around, you know, I think like a lot of people, we just it was just kind of a little story on the news, and then uh, the first real thing that was a concern for me uh, is when our governor came on and said that we're going to have to shut down certain businesses, and so when we heard that, uh, a lot of us uh, at the Harley Davidson dealership that I work at, we gathered around the TV, and he came on, and we were thinking, you know, they're going to shut down for the weekend, and he announced two weeks, and we thought the sky was falling. Two weeks, that's crazy. I, you know, we can't shut down for two weeks. And then little did we know that that turned into a month, five weeks, and that was obviously in March. So when it first happened, since it's so unprecedented, I mean, nobody, none of us have ever seen something like this that has shut down you know, businesses and entertainment and all those kinds of things. So uh, I just thought, you know, like anything, it's gonna go by quickly, you know, trying to be optimistic. And uh, unfortunately, that was not the case. Yes, I thought that it's going to hurt us in the music business, the touring industry, but I, don't, I didn't think it was going to be as bad as it actually is, to be honest with you, man. It's gotten, I think, completely ridiculous. My, my early thoughts on, on COVID and, you know, I study, studied medicine a bit, so I'm very interested in uh, medicine and viruses and bacteria and um, I knew this one was worse than all the others. I knew when Ebola and Zika virus all came along that, that they would disappear and the scaremongering that was going on with those viruses and how bad it was going to be. But with COVID I saw something different. Because of COVID the whole entertainment industry is not around right now you know so i f at first and i think still now i'm a little i still think it's a little overreaching um especially in las vegas where the majority of people here are self-employed people involved in the entertainment industry you know come on las vegas it's like there's music and entertainment everywhere and we're going to shut down that whole thing and, and, and yes, ruin people's lives. I mean, I was, I was kind of dumbfounded by the approach. I didn't buy a bunch of TP, but I got nervous and I did go to the CVS and I bought a bunch of canned goods and beef jerky and candy. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Well, I wake up and smoke some dope. No. <laughs> um, since COVID, I am, uh, my mornings are pretty slow, uh, attempting to get some exercise in in the mornings and then taking some online classes, trying to, uh, to further some education. Uh, I've always had somewhat of a passion for marketing and I'm trying to take some social media marketing classes and uh, starting to study some other uh, some other options for a career path for the most part. I started um, doing some live streaming from this room right here uh, because I figured a couple of reasons. Number one, I realized that I need to keep my voice in shape. I need, I need to give myself a reason to sing. I got to keep singing and I had to keep playing. And I realized that especially when this thing first hit, in March and April, people needed, you know, some comfort. People needed some entertainment. Well, I've been keeping myself busy uh, by doing, you know, live shows online twice a week. So uh, I take those very seriously. I try to learn new songs. I work my voice out twice a day. 
I, I work myself out physically every day just to try to keep myself together. Um, I'm, I'm always working on practicing my instruments, so I keep myself busy, otherwise I would go nuts. So that's kind of where I am. Currently, I have a day job. I go to work nine to five, Monday through Friday. I have been trying to get together with some of my bandmates to just play a little bit and sing and just to see them. You know, a lot of us haven't seen each other in such a long time. So just trying to do that and keep in touch and keep the chops up too. You know, don't want to lose it if you don't use it. <laughs> well, unfortunately I have a lot of free time right now, uh, but a typical week for me is um, I, uh, I'm involved in a church music situation and uh, I do charts, musical arrangements on the tunes for each Sunday's services. Um, I, I do arrangements. My, my wife is a keyboard player, as I mentioned. She kicks left hand bass. So she's become a valuable commodity. Some of the restaurant gigs have come back and so I do charts for her on the, whatever tunes that she's going to be called upon to play with whatever singer she's working with one, two, three nights a week. So um, most of my music time is spent in here doing charts and arrangements, you know, and I'm, I'm cool with that. I mean, so long as I'm involved in music, I've got music in my head in some manner, I'm, I'm cool, you know. My life now as a drummer has been very sparse. Um, I don't do any fly out dates at all right now. I don't know when that's gonna come back. Maybe summer of 2021, that's what I'm hearing. Um, I haven't worked since March 20th up until recently. I just started a, a local gig um, I'm on Saturday. So I'm on my like second Saturday and that's, so we're here October right now. And uh, I just started one night a, a week gig. So one night on Saturdays, every week I'm, I'm doing something. Since COVID, I think I've really pushed forward uh, to, to recording a lot more. I have a recording studio, an analog recording studio here in Vegas with an 80 channel console and a lot of old outboard gear. And I've been doing charity records um, I finished off a record for Dukes of the Orient. I've been working for the Zipline show, uh, doing soundtrack work, and now I'm about to start a new Asia FJP record. So there is really no typical day with me. It's, it's um, if I don't feel it and it's not contracted work or I'm working for a client in the studio, I do something else, I go and write a song or, I arrange something else and some maintenance in the studio, or I do photography, which um, I've kind of become a professional photographer um, with a Canon full frame. So actually probably last year, 20% of my income was photography. So, um, but in a, in a normal working day, I'll get up and be in the studio from, from early till, till late at night. Yeah, I think COVID's affected a lot of people and not just me, you know, in relationships, in entertainment, in uh, diet even. Um, you know, when you have less, less funds available, you do different things. Also, restaurants and bars and everything have, have been closed here. Um, you know, me personally, I went through a relationship change and I'm sure, you know, being on top of one another in a house didn't didn't help with that. I wouldn't say it didn't make it happen, but you know, I, I think a lot of people that have not been used to spending with their family, not just their significant other, you know, 24 hours a day, even working from home, for those people has got to be very frustrating. So I think in those aspects of life, outside my work, they have been huge changes. 
for me, it's mainly the anxiety of, of the uncertainty of the future is the main thing. Um, you know, when you choose a, when you choose to be a professional musician or professional singer, someone in the entertainment business, you, you automatically choose a life that has some ups and it has some downs, right? So these are things that we're used to. Like we chose this life. We chose a life that where our schedule is never the same. I don't ever wake up in normal pre COVID. Uh, I never woke up one day, you know, three days in a row and had the same schedule, right? Having said that, this is a whole new uh, level of that. Because at least pre COVID, I at least knew, okay, well, I got these gigs, I got that gig, I got that, that gig this month. Okay, this month's pretty busy. Oh, this is great. The next month, okay, I can do that, blah, 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 blah. Now it's blank. I mean, it's blank. So for me, it's kind of just been the additional stress and anxiety of, okay, um, what exactly am I going to do if this really lasts? I'm going to have to pivot, right? I'm going to have to pivot somehow and either change what I'm doing in music so that I can survive right and make an income somehow or change careers i totally had a, a panic time early on um, i couldn't see my mother who just lives a mile away from us but she's you know older oh don't tell her i said that but you know i couldn't see her for a while and I couldn't take her to her doctor's appointments and, and, and I had some panicky moments about Armageddon and, and zombie apocalypse and you know, like what, it, it, there, was, there was a time that I panicked and I look back on that now and, and, and it was totally righteous. Everything that was transpiring very quickly made me panic. Well, you know, I've got a, I've got a daughter who's going to be going to college next year. So I'm, I'm, I tend to think far ahead. So a lot of my plans have changed. A lot of things that I thought were all set are no longer all set because that's, that's my, that's my rainy day fund, right? So we're, we're dipping into that. So I'm trying to slow the bleeding as much as I can. So, you know, I also have parents that live in town. I help take care of them and it's, it affects everything. You know, it's, uh, we're doing the best we can. And I'm, I also feel bad for the guys that I'm not giving work to. You know, my band members, my, my sound man, my manager, my, my agents. I mean, we all, we're all feeling it and uh, we're just doing the best we can to stay positive. Musicians are sensitive people already on top of, you know, what's going on and um, for me, I've had my ups and my downs with it and really, really reassessing uh, a lot of things. And it's very depressing. So, you know, on the other hand, you know, I can still come in my room and I can still play and my heart is still affected when I sit in my drum throne and play my drum kit. So, you know, I'm not going to sit there and stew on it for too long to where it makes me really depressed, but it's it's super frustrating to like, okay, done, your career's done. Pick something else that you want to do after 35 years. It's like, oh, okay, let me think about that. What should I do? You know, what are you supposed to do? So it plays, it doesn't, it plays some havoc on your psyche and on your mind, yeah. Yeah, it's been my mother, I visited my mother in January. She's 87, in great health, uh, walks five miles a day, and has really been a great mother and supporting mother. My father died 20 years before of a stroke. And 
My mom's very strong lady. Her mother died when she was 12 years old, which made her really, really tough. She was sent away at the beginning of the Second World War, like they did with all the kids who were sent away from their parents to live in the country because London was being bombed. And it's made her an extremely strong person. And my mother, I went to visit her in January and all my family got together, all my cousins, about 20 of us. And then we went back from London to my house. And in the morning, I heard her groaning and she had a massive stroke. So luckily I was there, took her to hospital. She's had four strokes since, uh, poured boiling water on her, fallen down the stairs, broken her um, arm, her wrist. And it's been very difficult for me living 5,000 miles away here in Vegas. On Thursday, I spoke to my mother today. Um, there is going to be a massive lockdown in London where you can't visit anybody. You can't go to anybody's houses. Um, when my mother's in hospital, which she's been six times now, you can't visit somebody in hospital. You're not physically allowed to, if they're, even if they're dying. So it's really affected me badly because if I go over there, I've got a two week um, quarantine in the house. And I plan to go as soon as they relax some of the, the travel restrictions um, that they've imposed now. So I'd say my state of mind right now is cautiously optimistic, right? So I'm, I do believe things are gonna turn around, but I do, I think, not just musicians, but maybe musicians more than anybody else or the entertainment industry, we're in for some tough times. It, it, you know, it doesn't matter who's at the helm. I think some tough times are coming and I think it's gonna make, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? That's what everybody says. So that's the way I'm trying to look at it. But if, if I told you that I wasn't nervous about the next few years, I'd be lying. I think I've come to the realization that music may never come back for me. It may come back, and I hope it does for everyone, but it might not come back for me. And if it doesn't, that's okay, because I have other skills and other talents. I'm still gonna sing, but I may not do it as a, a money-making, you know, as a job, um, just and just do it for myself. My, on the other hand, I, I have to say that I'm still rehearsing with my bands. And, and I don't know if that's just selfish because I want to see them and I just want to jam with them or if there is actually some hope that we're going to play again. I guess there is. I, there is. There is. There's, there's hope that I will still get to play and sing with my bands. My state of mind in general, um, I try to stay positive because um, I do feel like our thoughts are very important. And if we allow ourselves to, to stay in that dark place of doom and gloom, it's not good for us physically, it's not good for us mentally, and it's not good for our overall surroundings. So, um, I'm taking this time, uh, and, and while I do have anxiety about th these things in general, I'm trying to maintain a positive outlook. And I'm trying to figure out what can I do to, as much as I can, embrace the situation and just kind of keep on swinging keep on swinging and get through it. You know, it's like we've got a dense fog here right in front of us. We've got to somehow cut through it. 
I am, uh, I'm okay now, um, but that I think is really due to the fact that I am keeping myself busy. Uh, I know that when I wake up each day, if I am looking or searching for stuff to do, that my mind will go to dark places and I will start uh, basically thinking about um, how shitty stuff is right now. And um, so, Basically, I have uh, make an agenda for myself each day or a schedule and do my best to keep myself busy. I'm okay at the moment, uh, but the moment that that stops, it's, uh, you know, I get pretty bummed out. I find myself surprisingly in, a, in, a, in a, a good state of mind because I'm able to still remain involved with music. I still, I have, a, a way to be creative. For those of us who only have playing and gigs to express that, it's much more difficult. Um, I, as I said, I'm a little disappointed in our species. Um, I think there's a lot of subterfuge behind this whole shutdown. Um, it's, it's sad and I, and I worry for a lot of my friends. But for me personally, you know, as a, here's, a, here's a perspective about musicians. It's an inwardly directed pursuit. We spend a lot of time in our own heads, right? Mm -hmm. The whole creative process, I mean, we're always practicing in our heads. So we can still do that in life, in whatever pursuit you want to apply it to, we only really have two choices. Either we're moving forward or moving backward. If you think you're staying in one place, you're moving backwards. Uh, so we have a choice of continuing to thrive, to continuing to grow and learn. We don't have to shut down just because the, the country has shut down, Las Vegas has shut down. We have a choice to continue to, to shed and write and create. So I'm choosing to be an active participant in my own life for as long as it goes on. Yeah, so it's, I don't know, something's changed recently where I'm a little bit more optimistic about things, maybe because getting together and playing music and, uh, and you hiring us for some stuff helped, I'm sure, getting it back together with John and Jonathan and getting creative and stuff. Um, Plus, you know, doing that on my local gig once a week has been, even even though it's just a little, you know, gig on the strip, you know, for a few hours, it's enough to get together with three other guys and play rock music and, and uh, have fun doing it. I'm more conscious of my habits. Uh, I make a concerted effort to walk every day to get to the gym and to try to eat better. Things that I didn't ordinarily think about. I, I'm trying to take my daily routine or decisions. I'm just trying to make better decisions because I know that if, I, if I'm not careful, I could allow this to really sink me. I don't know, this is where I'm at with that, sh that shit right now, man. I'm, just, I'm over it. I want things to be back to normal and I want r live concerts again, man. So I don't, and I, it's, it's a little weird because you don't know, are, are we ever, it's like you think, are we ever gonna have live concerts again? I mean, are we gonna, I mean, are people gonna be way overly sensitive now to go and do shit? You know, not, not going to the airport and getting on airplanes has probably been better for me. Right. But the other side of that is obviously no gigs and, you know, you miss, you miss the camaraderie with the other musicians and singers. That's the thing that we always say is that we do the gigs for free. We get paid to go to the airport and get on airplanes, stay in hotels and 3 a.m. lobby calls right the thing you really miss is hanging with your buddies after the gig and joking around with them at soundcheck and and performing 
and doing the gigs. And, and for those of us who have spent our entire lives doing that, to not have that to go to, it, it's, you go a little stir crazy. Uh, I definitely am not nearly as social. Uh, I used to love to go out. Uh, I love the action of the casino, whether I'm gambling or not. I love being in it and around it. I love this town because people are on vacation and we'll go out and have a drink and talk to strangers and uh, do lots of stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm a social, out, very outgoing, extroverted person. And that's all changed. Uh, I hardly go anywhere. Uh, I hardly meet anybody. Um, don't go to movies, don't go to the bowling alley, don't go to the casino, don't go, obviously there's no shows to go see. And uh, it's, uh, I think it's starting, you know, it, it will eventually, if you do a behavior long enough, will change your personality. And uh, I feel like I've become a lot more introverted and a lot quieter. Um, I also spend a lot more time on social media, which uh, I really don't like. Um, I think that that is, uh, it's the start of the demise of, of mankind, um, being influenced by, uh, by our feed. And um, uh, I really just, the main thing that has changed is that I, I'm just not the same person that I used to be because of COVID. Not saying that I can't come back again, but at the moment, leading a pretty quiet life. Well, it's made certain things a lot less fun. It, it makes me not want to, I understand that we have to wear masks, but it kind of makes me not want to go anywhere. Kind of makes me feel like I'm kind of holed up, you know, so it, it can be depressing sometimes, you know, because I don't see as many other people. You can't give people a hug. You can't really shake their hands. And that can, you know, that can play with your emotions a little bit, but I'm, you know, I'm hanging, I'm hanging on. So 2018 and 19, I was in a lawsuit in 2014, which really knocked the wind out of me over my old show. And um, I decided that in 2015 to go back on the road again with Asia featuring John Payne. And halfway through that year, I came up with a concept that basically was me on stage introducing the band for a few songs and then getting famous classic rock singers to do their songs with the band with projections of their original video uh, on, on screens and a bar on the stage where I'd interview them. And, you know, guys from Foreigner, Night Ranger, Journey, uh, Santana, um, uh, The Outfield, um, with my dear friend, the late uh, Tony Lewis, uh, Robin Zander from Cheap Trick, and it was very cool. So in 18 and 19, it was really gaining momentum. I was doing, you know, a show every other weekend with this huge cast and at least, you know, and sometimes two in a row or whatever, and with, a, with a, quite a big production. And those two years was really one of the highlights in my, my touring career that, that I was working with these iconic artists and uh, running this show with uh, the, the great band of musicians that I work with. And it was really gaining ground until uh, COVID really. Singing for me is a compulsion. It's not even a choice. Um, I used to get in trouble as a little girl because I just wouldn't stop singing. And my parents would say, here, here's a dollar, be quiet for a little while. But so yeah, singing for me is a part of me. It is a part of who I am. I didn't perform in front of people for many, many years. And then I got a great opportunity to be able to do that. If I don't get to do that ever again, it's gonna be okay. Cause I'm still gonna sing probably for my husband, for my puppies, and just for myself, just because I love it. You basically, as a musician that's doing fly out dates or touring, you're living your life for an hour and a half to be on stage. That's what's, that's the great part of being a musician and, and having to travel. You know, 
you're, the, the travel part is a lot of musicians say is the job part really. You know, nine hour travel days, lines, TSA, uh, you know, all that. That's the job part. But then when you're on stage, it's like, what, it's this great. It's like, what else am I gonna do? This is great. I, you don't think about all the hardship there was to get to the point on stage, you know, the early, early morning flight and, and all that other stuff. I don't know how you prepare for something like this. I, I don't. Um, wearing masks while you're performing, you know, or, or and singing, I, I haven't done that. And I'm not going to do that. Uh, there are certain things that I'm not going to do because it wouldn't bring me happiness. So, sorry, my fellow musicians, I'm not gonna sing behind a piece of plexiglass. I'm not gonna sing with a mask over my face. I'm not, I, it, it's like having handcuffs on and it's inorganic and it's weird and I don't wanna do it. I'd rather not do it at all. I was uh, afforded the luxury of being able to go to Berklee College of Music and that was changed my life. So, but I grew up, you know, Northeastern Ohio, you know, big fish, small pond and going to Berkeley in Boston, Massachusetts, which is an international school, really opened my eyes to, oh my gosh, there's other drummers. Wait a minute, they're from, he's from Japan? Oh wow, he's from Sweden? Why, there's international people here? Oh man, these guys are freaking great. I got this one. Me too, yeah, it, it's, there's, these could be lonely times. So um, yeah, we're lucky that we can, so I think, you know, if anything, having each other to bounce things off of and, and uh, you know, lean on each other, you know, good days, bad days, um, we're lucky. And we've been fortunate that we haven't given each other any bad germs. <laughs> Yet, yes. <laughs> um, I mean, kazoo, uh, I've probably dabbled in the kazoo field, but um, I, would, I would not call myself an experienced kazoo player. You're not a kazooist. No. <laughs> No. All right. Nowhere left to run from what I become. A servant to a plan. Find your way home. Keep it in trial. Gotta convince myself I'm still alive every day. myself believe all mixed messages received 